guys um i want this video here i thought this would be a good i didn't video this repair because i was out at a feed lot in the last three or four days i mean the wind has just been crazy just been blowing like crazy and uh every time i get into one of those situations people can't hear what i'm saying they can't it was just wasn't worth doing the video the weather was so crappy uh anyway let me tell you a little background on this first we'll well let's pull this out of the vise here and let me get this standing up straight to where it doesn't fall over okay this is the piston pump out of the 7520 and i wanted to go over closed center hydraulic systems on these types of tractors and most john deere tractors most most modern agricultural equipment i think kubota is the only one that's using a bigger tractor that's still using an open center system or using gear pumps they haven't got in line with everybody else but um what happened okay so this thing the complaint was the initial complaint was that tractor wouldn't steer tractor wouldn't do anything they were roading it and it just quit basically the no steering no hydraulic so drove out there and first thing i did you're gonna have on that on the 20 series you're gonna have three ports you're gonna have two on the on the priority block in the middle priority main valve block you're gonna have two ports up top and one down the bottom the left one's gonna be load sense if i, if I remember right and the right yeah load sense the bright one's steering if i remember right and the bottom one is for certain is uh system pressure so i went to the system pressure port just to see what kind of standby pressure you should have around 400 600 psi somewhere in there so i didn't have anything zero not a nothing and when you see zero standby pressure you know you've got an absolute you either got a charge pump problem or a piston pump problem so the next thing i did was went over to the filter head on the the way this system works okay see where the shaft's twisted off here well the shaft sticks down about that far and then there's a pump drive that goes vertical out of the runs off the pto kind of the live shaft off the pto gear train back in there but it goes vertical and it goes up here underneath this pumps the charge pump running off the pump drive it has a square kind of a square almost like a pump you know it's an internal gear pump the charge pump is like a transmission pump and an automatic transmission and then this the shaft this drive that that's got the square notches to drive the internal gear on that one well that shaft is hollow with spines it spines into this pump too as well okay so the charge pump pumps the oil sucks it out of the sump of the tractor pushes it through the filter head out of the filter head back into there's a looks like a big you'll see the big tube if you look on these pumps when you look up above the rock shaft housing and down in there there'll be a big tube on there that is the high pressure oil pump reservoir so it goes up into that tube fills that tube up and the suction side of this pump that's where it sucks so then it pushes it out of this pump uh, back into the uh priority main block valve through an inlet priority valve okay we'll stop there for a minute so the next thing i did is i went and i i pulled a plug out and put a fitting in the uh charge pump pressure port on the filter head and i had good charge pressure i think i had like 180 pounds so i thought well what the hell's going on here how come i'm not seeing nothing back here so anyways i I uh, ended up, I said, well, the first thing we got to do, we know that we've got a piston pump problem. Okay, we've got nothing back here on the on the pressure circuit back here for the hitch or anything. So I ended up pulling, it, this tractor was a, these are the, probably some of the best people that I've got that I work for. And I do, they, they, they run their equipment hard and they fix it, you know, but they run them hard. Let's just put it that way. And this thing had been doing this for a while, and what, what was happening here is this pump, <laughs> everything was leaking, and I'll tell you why it was leaking later. It was obvious why it was leaking later. So anyway, we pull, usually I'll just pull the 
pump, I'll reach over the top of the rock shaft where the uh, hitch is. A lot of you guys that don't know what a rock shaft is. A rock shaft is the, sh is the shaft that raises the hitch arms up for your implements. That's your rock shaft. So usually I'll just reach over the top, I'll clean that mess off, and I'll pull that, I'll pull the lines off, and I can pull the pump out. They're a pain in the butt to do, but you can get them out of there and pull the pumps out. There's just a two-bolt flange here. Anyway, so I, it was so greasy and so nasty, I said, we got a lot of cleanup to do, and I don't want a bunch of stuff falling down in there. Let's, and, and, and the owner says, yeah, we need to clean these valves and all this stuff up too and get these leaks fixed while we're here. So we pulled. We ended up pulling the rock shaft, which is not that big a deal. We pulled the, the the. We just dropped the hitch arms off, pulled the valve stack off, pulled the rock shaft clear off of it, and then we got in there and cleaned all that stuff out with scrapers and blew it out, brake clean, and we got it all cleaned up. We got the pump out, and then we found we found that the pump shaft was snapped off. And when I seen the pump shaft snapped off, I said, "Well, that's usually an indication of oil getting hot." And then you got to figure out why was the why was the oil getting hot, you know? So, anyways, the first thing you got to do is you got to get a pump back in it to figure out why the oil is getting hot. So, that bolts down to the base plate of the charge pump. The charge pump has its own plate, and then it bolts down to the case of the tractor. So you pull the charge pump base plate off, and then the charge pump internal gears are in there, and they were kind of scratched up just from normal wear. A tractor's got quite a few hours on it, and uh, so I said, let's replace the charge pump charge pump base plate because that charge pump wears against that too as well. So if the charge pump gears are scratched, the base plate's gonna be scratched too. So we'll replace it too. So replace charge pump, replace the piston pump, uh, stuck the pump on there, the next day went out, stuck the pump on there, right out of the gate. She was at, started it, fired it up, had a gauge on the system pressure port on the priority main block, and it was at high pressure right off the bat. I mean, I had like, I don't know, probably uh, 3,500 pounds of pressure. I shut it off. I knew it was on pressure as soon as I started the tractor. As soon as I started the tractor, you could hear the tractor start hard. You knew it was under load. You, you know, that's a, not, a lot of things, a lot of operators don't, well, some mechanics don't catch that either. But most operators, they don't ever catch that. They think there's something wrong with their starter. No, there's something, your hydraulic, your hydraulics are loaded. Your pump's at stall pressure. Stall pressure means the swash plate on the pump is rock clear over. And I'm going to show you that. We're going to take this pump apart and see what failed in it. See what seized in it. But I knew that was what was going on there, was that pump. We might as well start taking this one apart. i got to get a drink of my coffee before it gets cold on me. Let me see if I can find something here to this on but I knew that pump was stuck at stall pressure so I said man we got that's that's why our pump failed right there we got a problem and your operator never noticed that his pump what I call it, the pump was stroked all the time so the way this works okay the way this system works is when you start the tractor, okay, there's a spring in this thing. They call this the bias spring. And that spring, when the tractor's off and there's no hydraulics going, nothing's turning, that spring rocks that swash plate over to full stroke. And this is a Rexroth pump, I believe. It's green, but it's a Rexroth pump. And when you start that tractor, it's that swash plate because this bias spring rocks that over, okay? So the oil, once, it, once you start turning this and you start the tractor, you start pushing some pressure oil out the discharge port. This big port right here. Comes out, feeds the priority block, goes to the inlet priority valve. So the inlet priority valve is going to prioritize steering and brakes. But if it's stuck in a certain position, it, it won't let it do hardly do anything. So anyways, I had pulled the spool out of that thing. Uh, because when we came back and we put this in, and we didn't, we had, we thought we had, I, the pump was stuck on high pressure. I took the priority block all apart. We took the valve stack apart because we had it, we pulled it, actually pulled it back off the tractor, pulled it apart on the truck, cleaned everything up, couldn't find anything wrong with it. That's what kind of floored me. And um, 
put it back in there, and it did it again. And I thought, what in the hell's going on? Did we get a did we get a bad pump? I thought we got a bad pump. So I pulled the new piston pump out of it, brought it back to my shop, took it all the way apart, the brand new pump, because it was that was Saturday. And, you know, this is a feedlot. They got to get their cows fed. And this was their one of their main loader tractors for loading their feed with the loader. And, you know, I, I try to go out of my way, I, especially with animals. You know, they got to get fed. So I I hustled and I, I put the pump, uh, pulled it completely apart, pulled the compensator off, couldn't find anything wrong with the, that what. And then I'm sitting there beating on my head going... In this situation, see, I learned a little bit here. I, there's only three things that can cause this pump to stall at high pressure like that. Either the swash plate inside the pump is stuck. They call it, some people call this the pump regulator. I call it the compensator. That's kind of the older, I guess, nomenclature for it. You're going to have a what they call the flow regulator spool, and this is the pressure side spool here. This is how you can set your flow. This is how you can set your pressure. There's a little bit of adjustments on that when you, and I'll go through that in a minute. So anyway, that oil will leave out of this high pressure port going to the main priority block. It'll leave out of that main priority block, go through the inlet priority valve, and then the inlet priority valve spool will move accordingly. It's based on spring pressure in the spool. And it's, say if one side drops, that priority spool is gonna, Say so if your steering side pressure drops, it's, it's prioritized with the spring to shove more oil to the steering and brakes than it is to the rest of the circuits like uh, the, the remotes or the loader. So you still have steering and brakes. So anyway, after it leaves there, it comes back in to the flow regulator spool here, this outside spool, okay? And that oil forces that spool up and then the oil goes into the piston on the swash plate. The swash plate piston, or the, some guys, uh, some of them call it the servo piston. I just call it the swash plate piston. Okay, then that oil acts against the top of that piston, and what it does, it balances that. That's where your standby pressure comes in and where your pump becomes de-stroked out of. This is when you first start it, and then that, so your bias spring has got that thing stroked all the way over, so then that, piston comes up when you first start it and gets that four to six hundred psi to overcome string pressure and then it makes that pump go horizontal that swash plate okay now you're at four to six hundred psi and it's what they call standby pressure now when you pull a remote back or something like that or you put kind of any kind of load on that you've got that's a whole nother topic of all the shuttle valves that are in between the sections, that's what you call your load sense system. And that load sense system is going to come back around through this compensator line, and it's and that's that's going to make the pump go to more stroke because you're 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 opening up a shuttle check and putting more oil back to the compensator spool to make the stroke the pump stroke even more. Okay, but on this situation, uh, what we had there was that. We had a situation basically after I pulled the pump off. I said, I, then I knew there was something wrong with that inlet priority valve. I said, I got to go back and revisit that priority valve. There's something I'm not catching there. And to be honest with you, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to have to get in the book, but there's a little poppet valve of some kind. I pulled that spool out of there, and see, I learned something myself, and I do this stuff all the time. And I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see what it is. I don't even think the book says it. They just tell you, tell you to replace the entire valve spool. But there's a little poppet valve that's down in the recessor in the hollow part of that priority valve spool that I didn't see the first time. And sure as hell, it was stuck. After I got it unstuck, I put it all back together. See, now when I went to adjust this, you can adjust this. When you put a new pump on, it's a good thing to check your system pressure. Don't just stick a new pump on there and just assume that everything's good. Because <sighs> it ain't well, sometimes. They factory set these on a bench, but it, it's completely, you need to check them on your tractor. Every tractor is different. So, anyway, 
the first day I put this pump in, I couldn't, I, I was trying to adjust. What you do is you'll start the tractor and I couldn't even, I tried to adjust this flow regulator spool and I couldn't get any action out of it. So, I mean, nothing, nothing would respond. So after I had done that and got that little poppet valve inside that inlet priority valve unstuck, then I could adjust this. So what you want to do when your tractor is running, this vice is not so great in the shop. One of these days I'll get one. By the time I'm damn near dead, I'll have all the things I really want. Um, but anyway, I... <laughs> get these loose here after I got that unstuck and got that on I got this adjusted what you want to do is you'll start the tractor up and you this is where you'll adjust your four to six hundred psi if you go too far with it you can crank this down to where you've got damn near system pressure with this you know it'll stroke the it'll stroke it over so just adjust it around, actually, not, and I've had a few of them that were kind of weird that, I mean, I had to get almost seven to 800 PSI to get it to where it had enough flow. It would, it would, it would make it to where the pump wasn't stroke real hard all the time, but it, but you could just tell if you put a flow meter on the remotes, for some reason, that's why I'm saying some of these tractors are different from others, the way they react. And I've had a couple of them that were set at four, four to 600 PSI where the book said, but the loader was slow, everything was slow, and I just had to adjust this to around seven, 800 PSI to make it to where everything was responsive. And I got the right flow on my flow meter. I think it's around 25 gallons a minute. Uh, 25 to 27, I think, is what this pump was put, supposed to be putting out. So that's, that's what you'll do, you'll, you'll do that. You'll, you'll get your four to 600, you know, or you know, a little bit more. Don't go around 1,000 or 1,200, that's too much. Then you're, then you're, what, what happened, this pump was, this pump was, an open center gear pump system is basically, it's pumping, it's a, it's a, what they call a positive displacement pump. A gear pump is a positive displacement pump. So that means, what that means is that pump, it doesn't matter whether you're pulling a handle or not, that sucker's pumping at system pressure all the time. And that oil has somewhere, it has to have somewhere to go on an open center system on a gear pump. This is a closed center. So usually it'll come up to a relief and go back to tank on an open center system. On a piston pump, if that pump is stroked, it's almost like a gear pump with no relief valve. That oil really doesn't have anywhere to go, you know, at full stroke. If, if, if you had an implement or a flow, uh, a flow meter with a restrictor hooked up to the remotes and you were circulating oil back to return, then you've got somewhere for the oil to go and you've got a way for the oil to be cooled down. With the pump stroked and no flow, you have no way for the oil to be cooled and the oil gets extremely hot. And that's, that's what happened to this system. The oil got hot because the pump was at full stroke with no demand on it. Okay, first thing you'll see here, this is the end plate. You're gonna have just pull this off the magnetic deal here. Okay, and you're going to have a, a wear plate here. That's not wanting to get stuck on there. The o ring for the end plate. That's just your wear plate. That's going to be like that, actually. It's dialed in there. You can't really. These pumps are actually pretty easy to put back together and everything. There's a bearing in here. I bet the bearing on the bottom got I bet the bearing on the bottom got seized up or something. <clears throat> we'll pull this plug out of here. This is gonna that plug right there will be controlling the uh will be controlling the bias spring. It actually houses the bias spring. I already broke this loose in the back of the service truck because these are red Loctite is in there from the factory and they are tight. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, there's our piston. Darn it, I need, I might have to go out to the truck and get a pick or a magnet or something to get this out of there. Sometimes you can get lucky. Okay, there's our, there's our piston that controls the little plunger that shoves our, this ain't, I'm not, I'm, <clears throat> the bias spring is below this. This counteracts the bias spring, this style. Some pumps are opposite the other. This one is, this one's a little bit different. So then, I might be able to get this out of here as an assembly, we'll see. We have chunks of material falling out of the pump, bearing, bearing in the shim, more pieces. Yeah, she's pretty hammered. <laughs> Rotating group. I would say she's pretty well done for. And I'll show you, I'll get all this stuff out of here. And I'll show you what we're looking at. And there's... Huh. Usually that pops out of there, but it's stuck in there because this one got damaged pretty bad. And there and there. Okay. Now it's coming loose. I need a pair of pliers, is what I need. Grab that with, we'll just flop it out of there. This, this is probably just gonna wind up going in the scrap pile. But this is the little plunger that hits the top. Okay, so where's the piston at? Piston rides on top of that. That sits on top of the swash plate. The spring is on the other side of the swash plate in a recess, and this counteracts the spring pressure. Here's one of the bearings. Okay, a little saddle bearing that the swash plate rides on. There's the swash plate. Here's the bias spring. Basically all that's in there, left in there, is the shaft. See, and that's what happened here, the bearing. Inside bearing, inside bearing failed when it got hot. I don't know if you can see that. Actually, I think I got a light now. Lights in the service truck. But if you can see that, that bearing fell in there and seized. So then it snapped the shaft off in the pump. Okay, so here's your rotating group. So you got your swash plate. Here's your bearings will sit here to where it rotates. And some of them will have a bearing like this, and some of them fancier pumps will have roller bearings. Little kind of like needle bearings here. But you'll have a the spring, you'll see where the spring, the bio spring goes right here. And that'll that'll rock that over at full stroke when it's off. Okay, and the spring sets there like that. And then that little plunger, what did I do with it? I got a lot of parts. I got the power quad transmission, which I'm not going to be able to do anything until after Christmas with it because you ain't going to get any parts. Um, anyways, oh, there it is right there. There's the spring. That'll that'll sit there. And then the piston, actually, that'll sit. Oh, I'm all fingers, ain't I? That'll sit there like that. And then this piston sits on top of it. Your rotating group, here's your rotating group. Okay. Look, it broke some of the slippers off. And okay, the way these work, guys, is when this when this pump is at when this pump is rotating, okay, this whole pump's rotating. When it's like this, it's not it's pumping your standby pressure basically when it's like this. Now when this pump is tilted at an angle like this. Some of the pistons will be sucked in on the intake, kind of the intake stroke, and some will be on the basically, when it comes, well actually, these, these slippers, these pump, these plungers here will be kind of on the intake stroke. See, when they're down, they'll be sucking oil in. And when they come around with that swash plate tilted and pushes these plungers back closed, they're pushing oil. That's how you get your oil pressure when this is tilted. Now this, 
you'll see like a motor, a, a piston type motor, it'll be at a fixed angle. This wash plate never moves. Well, that's not entirely true. You'll have what they call, there'll be variable, there'll be, there's variable motors too, but most applications you'll have on a lot of the ag stuff, you'll have a variable displacement pump, which means this wash plate will change angle based on pressure or flow. And then the motor will be a fixed displacement motor and it'll be, the swash plate will be angle. But there are variable displacement motors as well to where they move too. So, but I, hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea uh, of the, of how a pressure flow compensated uh, piston pump works. This is a pretty basic, to be honest with you, it's a pretty basic pump. Uh, you can get into the, like the Sour Dan Foss uh, uh, pumps. They're great big ones. They're the Eaton pumps. And, and they're all kind of the set up on the same principle as these are. So this video basically here I want to uh, want to focus on. If you get a pump, you guys out there in the field, you get a pump and you hear that tractor laboring hard, get a gauge on that system pressure port. You know, don't half-ass it and just say, well, you know, I don't need a gauge on that. You got to get a gauge on that system pressure port, and it even hooks, you need a, you need a flow meter, too. You need to see if you got flow, too. Even if you get one stuck on stall pressure, if, if the operator catches it and tells you to come out there and look at this problem that he's having, if you get, because I've had guys call me before, I've had these, I've had these pistons stick in the bore, and then the pump, it would never push that swash plate down to counteract spring force and the swash plate the swash plate would be stuck at full stroke i've had the pumps be a problem so you know and then you can have a pump also you can have a charge pressure problem too not supplying enough oil you can have the pump stuck at full stroke and because you're not getting enough oil to the piston pump that's why you got to check charge pressure so anyways I just thought I would explain it, and make a little video of you know you're always learning in this game, and different things happen, and it's you know it's just it's just every day is a learning experience doing this job. So anyway, guys, so if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. And to all my loyal viewers, uh, I hope you guys have a merry Christmas and a happy New Year.